Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Era of Programming using Scala. In the last video, we started talking about object declarations, and we saw that they are in many ways very similar to class declarations, uh, but instead of setting up a whole class of objects and allowing us to instantiate them, these create a singleton object, just one object, and it's given the name, whatever we declare it as. Uh, they also can't take arguments, but they have a body that, that has all the same things as a, uh, as a class. In this video, we're going to look at one of the first uses of why we would want to create objects, and this is to create applications. So far, we've been writing all of our Scala programs as scripts. Um, so let's go ahead and start our first app.scala. In our first script, you might remember that we wrote something like this. Okay. So, the advantage of scripts is that they have very little overhead. You just put whatever commands you want inside of the file, and they will be executed in order from top to bottom. And we could run this using the Scala command, and it would print out. The problem with using scripts was that we pretty much had to put all of our code inside of this one file. We weren't able to organize things very well. And now that we're moving to object orientation, it would actually be very nice to be able to split things up, to put different classes in different files, and to provide a better organization for our source code. Because as our programs get bigger and bigger, we don't want them all in a single file. You really don't want a single file that is many hundreds or thousands of lines long. Uh, you'd like to keep them reasonably short. And so to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything inside of here inside of a single object de declaration. And I'm going to name my object the same thing I named my file. That isn't absolutely required, but it is um, recommended. Uh, it's, a, it's a good style to get into. That way you know where things are by just off of their file names. Now, in order to make this an application, turns out this isn't quite complete. I have to have inside of this object a particular method. And our programs start at a method that's called main. So when you write an application, we're going to have this object declaration, and we are going to define a main method. Now, because we get to run this from the command line over here, it's possible you can pass in arguments. And so our main method has to take the arguments from the command line. If you don't do this, you're not actually defining the real main method. You're just defining some other method that's named main. So your main method has to have a, the name main, lowercase m. It has to take one argument. It does not have to be called args, but it has to be an array of string. And it returns unit. And so you should recall that this notation here, when I don't put an equal sign, is a shortcut for doing that. Okay. And I will generally go with the, the shortcut. Uh, so this it returns unit. And this specifies it as being an application. Uh, this means that we can run first app uh, as the starting point for a large program. Now, when we write this, it turns out we can still run it the same way we've always done. And this is in part because the Scala program here is smart. Uh, notice that this five lines of code does exactly what we had before in one, uh, in some ways you might wonder, well, why did I write, wind up writing all of this extra code in there when it doesn't do anything extra? We'll see over time why you would want to have this extra organization in there. Uh, but hopefully it's also clear to you why we didn't start this way. Uh, we started with just the script because it was a single line and it kept things simple. Going up to an application adds a little bit of overhead. And when you start it off, this has quite a few keywords in it, uh, object, main, def, array, string, that you didn't necessarily know. Uh, so that's why we start with the scripts uh, when, you're, when you're learning. But now you're ready to move on to, to the applications. The real advantage of applications is when we don't run them like a script. Instead, we're going to break it up into two pieces. We're going to compile it first, and then we're going to run it. And one of the things you might have noticed when you run Scala applications is sometimes they take a while to, to run, at least the scripts do. Uh, when you run it as a script, there would be a significant pause. And that's because it would have to go through and compile your code and then run it all in the background. 
When you're writing applications, typically you're going to separate these steps. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to compile it. And actually, let's go ahead and just to, to make something clear here, I want to look at the files that we already have in this directory where we've been coding for our, our, the chapter on object orientation. And I'm going to run a slightly different command, Scala C, short for the Scala compiler. And I want to run Scala C on first app. And I hit enter. And we'll pause for a second because it is going through and doing the compiling. It's doing the same thing that would cause a pause when we would run things as a script. But now, if I look in this directory, you'll see that in addition to the four Scala files, I have two files that end in dot class. Now, dot class is the extension that is used for Java bytecode, and Scala compiles to, to Java bytecode. So these are binary files. And if we look inside of one of them, I always do this with a certain sense of intrepidation because sometimes when you look into a binary file, you will get something that uh, does bad stuff to your display. Uh, you can see here it says it recognizes. This is a binary file. Are you sure you want to see it? Yes, I actually do. It looks like this. Okay, So it compiles it to, to a binary format. Um, this is a format that that is faster for it to execute. It's already done a lot of the work of processing the text, and it's just put down instructions for actually running the, the program. Once we've done that now, to run it as a, an application, we say we're going to run Scala on first app, and I don't put the dot Scala. And then it runs. It does the same thing it did up here, one thing, if you play with this for a while yourself, you'll note that when you run it this way, it will always run fast. Uh, there won't be that pause at the beginning. It's not doing the, the compile step because we did the compilation up here. What's even more uh, significant to point out is that when you do this, you don't have to have the text file. So we have three files here for first app. One of them is this text file which is what we wrote, and I can move that I'll just call it other.scala, we'll move it back in a second. So if I were to try to put .scala here I'd have a problem because it doesn't exist. But I can run Scala on first app, the application, and it only needs these two .class files and it runs just fine. So you could actually delete this source file if you had no need for it, which is not normally what you're doing. But when you're distributing applications and giving them to other people to run, you generally don't want to give them your, your source code, unless it's an open source project. Uh, you want to give them the compiled code because that's what they really need in order to run things. So let's go ahead and move our first app back to there. Um, the other thing that we should demonstrate here is that we actually can use these command line arguments. And so I just want to edit the script so it prints them out. Now, I'm going to try just running Scala on first app and give it some arguments. And what happens? There are no arguments. Why not? Well, because when I run this in this way, this is actually running the compiled version. I edited this file, but I didn't recompile it. So if I want to run the new version, I need to go back through and compile it. And then after it's done compiling, I can run it, and we get this modified version. So that's something very significant. Once you move to, to apps, you have to remember to compile. Uh, we're going to fairly quickly move away from command line. We'll start doing our programming inside of Eclipse. And it turns out the Eclipse is going to automatically compile everything for us. Um, but there will be times where you need to go out to command line and just realize that if you're running things as applications, note here, I don't have a dot Scala there, you have to recompile every time that you make a change in order for that change to be reflected when you run it. <clears throat> so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to come back and we're going to look at the other usage of uh, the other primary usage of, of objects. There are, there are actually more uses that we're not going to talk about uh, at this point. 
Um, but the other big use for them is companion objects. And so we'll see how a singleton object can be declared and associated with a class to become a companion.